Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. On today's episode, I wanted to look at luminosity masks inside of Luminar 4. Now, I'm a big fan of luminosity masks, and if you can see right here, I have this uh, a Tony Kuiper luminosity masking panel right here, which I love it, and I use it all the time in Photoshop. However, I'm excited that we do have some luminosity masks inside of uh, Luminar 4, and I use them to make this image. Now, here's where it started from, right here. And I brought it to this point with the luminosity masking feature in Luminar 4. I want to show you how I did that, and hopefully that will encourage you to start using luminosity masks if you're not already using them. So, without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started. I'm starting out in Photoshop, but honestly, you could uh, do this in Luminar as a standalone uh, application as well. So, no big deal there. So... Here's my original uh, background. I just copied it so we can start afresh. So let's come up here to Filter, and we're going to come to Luminar 4, and I'm going to launch it, and we're going to get started here. And here we go. Let me get rid of my looks here because they always get in my way. When I look at this image, you know, this cow right here, it just seems a little dull to me. It looks like it needs some, uh, some contrast, needs some highlights bumped up, and needs some shadows darkened up a bit. And... Uh, to do this technique, the, this is very important. First thing you need to do is come to layers. But before I go there, I want to show you something. If you click on light right here, and I'm going to be using highlights and shadows and smart contrast, um, you don't really get any layer masking capability on the original layer that you get in Luminar 4. So what you need to do is come up to layers and add a new adjustment layer. And when you do that and you come back to light, you'll notice now you do have a mask edit mask here so that's very important for the first step if you don't know where the luminosity mask lives it lives inside of this edit mask right here and so you'll find under the brush rad radial mask and the gradient mask you'll find at the bottom the luminosity mask just click that and you'll see right here it makes a lights luminosity mask now you can also make a darks luminosity mask but to do that you just have to invert the light now my adjustments are only going to affect the lights of the image here okay so what I want to do is uh, bring up the highlights and when I do you can see like the hair on this cow or the fur whatever you want to call it comes up and I don't want to clip my shadows if I type the J you can see there's a slight bit of clipping here but I'm not worried about that okay so I brought my highlights up I'm gonna also bring my shadows down just so those highlights you know that'll add some contrast between the highlights here and let's click this eyeball here. You see the before, see the highlights have definitely been brought up. And I'm also going to bring up the smart contrast a little bit. And again, it's only going to be working with the lights of the image. So I'm going to bring that up a little bit like so. Now let's take a look at the uh, before and after. So there's the before and there's the after. Now it's going over the entire image. So here's the next very important step. What we need to do is come back to layers. And now we're going to edit mask, okay? So we're just going to click on edit mask. We're going to get a brush. And we're go going to be on the paint in mode. And my softness is at 100%. I always like to work there. Opacity is at 100%. So all we're going to do now is paint the adjustment on. Okay, so we're just going to paint it on. And if we want to, it helps just to turn, come up to this little eyeball and show the mask. So we can actually see what we're doing. And I'm going to do a rough painting job here. Uh, because it is, a t as I always say, it is a tutorial. And I don't want to waste your time. So, And when you're doing this, you want to take your time and do it right. Let me make my brush a little bigger. I'm just using the right bracket key. And just fill this in here. And maybe make my brush a little smaller and paint on this other horn. Right in here. Let's paint this in. Don't want to leave this horn out. This cow needs this horn. It's important to him, I believe, anyway. Okay. And, you know, you can come up and hit these little hairs here if you wanted to. Something like that. Hopefully I didn't mess that up. Maybe get these little hairs in here. Even get that one right there. Let's see what it looks like. So let's click this eyeball here. And there we go. And let's click, here's the before and here's the after. So already you can see it's adding some nice contrast to the image here. All right, and then click done here. And next we're gonna work on a darks luminosity mask. 
The next step is we have to make a new adjustment layer and uh, for the dark's luminosity mask. But before we do, let's go ahead and rename this adjustment layer one. So click these three dots right here and come to rename layer. Let's just call this light so we don't get confused. Okay, and now let's come up here to the plus and add new adjustment layer. And let's call this one, rename it to darks. That'll just help. Okay. And the other thing I want to do is uh, I want to copy this mask right here from layer one, from the lights layer. So I'm going to right click it and say copy. Okay, so we'll have that in the memory buffer. And let's come back up here to, well, we already are in darks. And so now we need to come to light. And now we need to edit mask and we need to make a luminosity mask. But this time we're going to invert it. So come up to the mask icon, right click and click invert. Very important. So now what we're going to do is take the shadows and bring the shadows down to the left. And we're only working on the dark tones of the image. So we can bring that down pretty much there. And let's take our smart contrast and pull that up a little bit so we can pop a little more contrast there. And uh, maybe just take our exposure. Let's see what happens if we just pour exposure down just a little bit. I think that might help. We can come readjust it if we need to. And then what we want to do is come back to the layers. And normally we would go to the edit mask, which we still have to. We'd go to brush. But this time, rather than brushing everything in, let's come over here to mask. And we're cheating a little bit. We're going to go to paste. And so now we pasted the mask in so we don't have to go through all that painting again. And you can see it pasted that mask right there. Let's click on done here. If we felt we were a little too strong in that darks adjustment, we could come to this opacity and we could ease it off a bit if we wanted to. But I think it looks good. Same with the lights. We could click on this layer and ease that back if we wanted to. But I think I'm really happy with it because, again, here's our before and here's our after. And I think we're looking really good. Now, I want to add a little bit of structure to this cow right here. And you'll notice we already have this layer mask right here, right? So we can take advantage of this layer here and just come to light again. And there's our adjustments. And, of course, we could come here and, like, if I felt that exposure was too far down, I could readjust it. And any of these adjustments I could readjust if I wanted to. Um, let's see here. Or I could even, like, take this highlights and pull this up. So I don't really touch touch any of the highlights. It might be bleeding over from that uh, darks mask. So I might just pull that up just to protect that a little bit. And let's go here to AI structure. And now, being the fact that we have that uh, layer mask already made and it's only on the cow right here, we can come with the structure and just pull up the structure. And you notice it's only affecting the cow, which is pretty cool. And I don't want to go too crazy with it and make it look like really out of place. But maybe something like that. Now let's click this toggle. Here's the before and there's the after. You know, just a little bit of structure. So there it is. Working with luminosity masks uh, to add some contrast pop, pop on your image. And then we ended up with a little bit of uh, AI structure to help it out. So let's click this um, split screen here. So here's the before and here's the after. So pretty nice results. And I just really did this tutorial just to show you the power of a luminosity mask. And you can use them for many different reasons. You can use them for adjusting color or whatever. Any adjustments in luminar luminosity masks are awesome. And this is just one application to use. I just wanted to tweak your interest on luminosity masks today. And I hope I've done that. So here's our finished results. And as you remember, I did start out in Photoshop because I want to show you one more thing in Photoshop. Not, no adjustments. I just want to show you something I did previously in Luminar. So let's go ahead and click Apply. And this will bake this into this image and bring us back into Photoshop. All right. So what I wanted to show you was, uh, you'll see here where I have Smart Contrast masked in. And here's the adjustment we just made right here. So I'm going to click this off. And this, I just want to show you how powerful the luminosity mask is because this is just adding smart contrast to this cow without a luminosity mask, you know, and just, and just you know, painting it in, layer masking it in on the cow. And that's the result I got as, co as compared to this. As you can see, this one looks a lot more natural and it really fits into the image. Now let's click on the bottom background here so we can see the original image. So here's the before and here's the after. And again, here is the just smart contrast added to it. So 
I think these results are really great. So there you go. Give the luminosity masks inside of Luminar a try. I think you're going to love them. Once you start using them, you're going to use them all the time and you're really going to enjoy them. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial today. If you did, please like it and share it with your friends. And also, if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, please consider doing so. And if you do so, click that subscribe icon and also click the bell notification icon. And every time I upload a new video, you'll be notified about it. Hey, thanks again for uh, joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And I'll see each and every one of you right here next time. But until then, happy editing.